Do you find yourself so emotionally invested in a man that you can't walk away from him no matter how hard you try? Does it feel impossible to emotionally detach from a man you've invested so much of your time and energy into? When you've given your mind, body, and soul to him, it becomes agonizing to try and let him go. Well, today we're going to discuss five amazing steps of actionable items on how you can emotionally detach from him and finally be free to find the love that you actually deserve. First step we have low. I want you to imagine that you're stranded on an island and on this island you're starving. Now you need to go get something to eat. You have two apple trees that are available to you on this island and they coincide with two separate rivers. You're trying to figure out what is the most efficient way to get to an apple tree so that you can eat the apples and stop yourself from starving. The two options you have is an apple tree that is at the base of a river flowing downwards towards the apple tree. The other option that you have is a second river, except the apple tree is about halfway upstream. So in order for you to get to the apple tree, you would have to travel upstream. That's your second option. Let's say that in the distance between where you have to travel to get to the apple tree is twice as long as apple tree number two and river number two, meaning that you would have to swim twice as far in terms of kilometers or miles or distance, wherever you measure your measurements, versus river number two. Except with river number two, in order to get to your apple tree, even though you're only traveling half the distance, you have to swim against the current in order to get to your apple tree. So you think to yourself, hmm, probably the best and quickest way to get to my apple tree would be to take river number two because it's a much shorter distance, about half the distance. So you begin swimming upstream on river number two to get to apple tree number two. And after a while, you realize that you're actually expending a lot more energy trying to swim against the current to get to your desired apple tree. And eventually you realize that you're burning a lot more energy and calories swimming against this current than you would have been if you would have traveled a longer distance but gone with the current, meaning if you would have chosen river number one and stream number one, which was flowing downward towards your apple tree, even though you had to uh, travel a farther distance, you would have expended less energy and it would have been easier for you to get to your destination. So you're probably thinking, what does that analogy have to do with emotionally detaching? Your emotions are just like a flowing river of water. The more time you try to spend convincing yourself that you shouldn't feel that way. You shouldn't think that way. You shouldn't miss this person. You shouldn't be attached to this person. They aren't right for you. You don't want, you want to like escape these feelings. You're swimming against the current. You're not flowing with your emotions. You're trying to flow and get away from them. So you're swimming against this current. And the problem with that, much like the analogy, is that you are expending so much more energy swimming against this current to try to get to your destination of emotionally detaching yourself. You end up frustrated because as you're trying not to feel something, the first thing that happens is that you begin to feel that thing. The moment you find yourself trying to say, oh, I, I'm not going to have feelings for this person. I'm going to detach. I'm not, I'm, I'm never, I'm never going to think about them. They're just not going to be important. They're just going to, it's everything's just, they're, they're, they're the worst. I'm just never going to want them or, or want to be with them or be attached to anything about our relationship or them in general. That's the moment where you'll begin to become frustrated by how much you're thinking of them. And you'll begin to have this internal battle within yourself where you're like, oh, but I don't want to feel this way. But why do I feel this way? But I feel this way anyways, but I don't want to feel this way. And I feel so sad because I feel this way and I shouldn't feel this way. And you just become more and more and more frustrated as you allow something or an emotion to flow through you. It just ends up being an emotion. And then you realize quickly it's literally just an emotion. It doesn't really affect my physical reality whatsoever. I can feel it. And as time goes on, eventually whatever it was that I was feeling or thinking 
will pass with time number two is right now i know that some of you aren't poets i know that some of you aren't shakespeare i know that some of you have horrible chicken scratch handwriting that's perfectly fine i still want you to write specifically what i want you to write about is i want you to think of whatever person or situation or relationship it is that you want to emotionally detach yourself from then i want you to write down split that page that you're writing in half and i want you on one side to put pros and i want you on another side to put cons and all i want you to do is write down all the good things that that about that person and about that relationship that happened in the span of you dealing with them or knowing them everything good that you can think of whether it be an action that they did that was small a gesture a gift that they gave you anything you can think of as a positive that happened through the course of you knowing them and dealing with them and being in this relationship i want you to write it down in the pros the other half of your page is going to be the cons so vice versa I want you to write down anything negative you can think about this particular person you're trying to emotionally detach from. Write down anything negative you can think about the relationship that has happened, that you've been through, that they've put you through, anything that they've taken away from you, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, how they've treated you, if they treated you badly. I, I want you to, I'm talking about in each section, be as detailed as you possibly can. Don't be general. Write down every specific situation you can possibly remember and put it down there in detail. If it's like, oh, you said that he said that he was going to call me at 4 p.m. on Tuesday, April 23rd, and he didn't call me at all the whole entire day. And then the next day I texted him and then he told me that he, he forgot to call me and did it. Write down every single minor or large situation you can think of in the cons and the same thing with the pros be as detailed as you possibly can now this is a great exercise because what's going to happen this is the remember how i was talking about the brain works in very mysterious ways this is the amazing part about our brains and our emotions is that we tend to as we think of someone that we want to be with but we know we shouldn't be with we stop thinking logically and begin thinking emotionally. So for those of you who might be anxiously attached just in general, and especially with the people that you really care about or with a specific person in general, it is very difficult to be logical about the person or the relationship. Why? Because obviously you're emotionally invested in that person or relationship. So to just say, hey, I won't be with you because I know you're bad for me, that's easy in theory. But it doesn't actually work like that. And it's not actually that easy to do when you're emotionally invested in the person, you see? So the reason I say this is such a great exercise is because it stops you allowing yourself to use emotions to guide you in the direction you should be going into. And it stops you from allowing emotions to control your view or perspective of the relationship situation or the person that you're trying to emotionally detach from because as you're emotionally invested in the person and as you're emotionally invested in the situation as you think of reasons you should not be with that person your emotions will override you and make you feel like make you feel like make you feel like your investment in that person emotionally should override the experiences that you actually had with that person and when you write these things down it forces you to look at the reality of the relationship and what has really happened in the relationship have you ever in your mind been with someone even romantic or not and felt like in your mind you had a conversation with that person like you played it through your mind having this back and forth conversation with them and they answered you you answered them you had a talk and all this good stuff and you play it in your mind and it's so vivid in your mind that you actually go out into the rest of your life and into the future and you feel like you actually had that conversation with them and you address them or deal with them as if that conversation actually occurred. And then they make it clear to you, what are you talking about? We never actually had a conversation about that. We never actually talked about that. And in your mind, you're like, but I'm so sure 
that we discussed this. I'm so sure it feels just like we actually did talk about this. And it's crazy how you might be like, someone might upset you or anger you. And then you're like, but I already talked to you about this and I told you how I feel and this and that, right? And you're talking to them as if you've already had a discussion about this. And they're like, you've, we've never talked about this. You've never told me about this. You never told me that this was a problem for you. You never told me that you were upset by this. And you almost feel like, but you should have known we had this whole conversation about it. And it just feels like in your mind, right? You're having a conversation with them, but it didn't actually happen in reality. I want you guys to understand how the mind and the emotions can play tricks on you and make you feel like, feel like, feel like, Things are real or have happened that haven't actually happened. And when you're emotional about a situation, vice versa, it can also make you feel like things haven't happened that have actually happened. That's why the practice of actually writing these things down as a pros and cons list is so great because it forces you to put away your emotions towards the situation and you actually have to sit there and look at the list of the reality of the relationship from your own memory and perspective, because it's easy for someone else to tell you, hey, you shouldn't be with that guy because of this and this and this. And you're just kind of in one year out the other year. You're like, whatever. It's a lot more sobering when you write down on a list everything good and bad that has happened in that relationship. And chances are, if you feel like you're, it's necessary for you to emotionally detach from that situation or that person, it's because things have transpired that you know this relationship or person no longer serves you or being with them is going to serve to your detriment. And in that realization, that's, pro that's obviously going to be coming from situations that have occurred in the past. So my point being, by the time you write this down, write this list down and you put down all your pros and all your cons, you get everything off your chest, all the thoughts, all the memories that you can imagine, and you actually put it down on this paper, you'll realize that your cons list is ages longer than your pros list. And that is a very sobering thing to realize, especially when it's coming directly from you, because it will help you realize that you know in your own mind and in your own heart that this isn't working. The great thing about writing this down is that the moment you start feeling like, oh, but don't you miss laying around with him? Don't you miss like the times where you guys would just be in bed cuddling and looking into each other's the moment you feel like that. You don't even have to do anything. You just pick up your piece of paper and you read your piece of paper over again. For some of you it might be pages. Okay. And you read your pages over again and it will easily and quickly remind you of why you walked away from that relationship or that person that you're trying to emotionally detach from. And it's a very good way to like therapy, therapy yourself. I know for some of you, you might go to a friend for that, but the reality of it is you can't always have a friend to continuously remind you of every single little reason why you should emotionally detach from this person. And it's a great way to have something within arm's reach that anytime you need it, you can just read it and be like, oh, that was, yeah, I forgot about that. That was really bad. Oh, oh my God, I forgot that they did that thing to me. That was insane what they did. And you almost like become angry again. Because when you start looking at the list again of everything that you wrote down, and when remember, that's why I said, make sure you write it down in detail. Because when you reread that list, you'll be like angered again and be like upset again. Like, oh my God. Why would I ever go back to someone like that? Oh my God, why would I ever want to be invested into a relationship or a person like that? And you'll almost be like offended that you would ever even have the audacity to think that someone that treated you like that, that puts you through that, you should ever be considering allowing them to come back into your life. And you'll be like disgusted with yourself again, which is good. You want to be disgusted with yourself again and disgusted with the idea of bringing them back into your life. Number three, this is where we get really important and I want you to pay very close attention because you're going to make this mistake and it's going to be number three, you need to remove. Now, I'm not talking about remove them from your mind. 
I'm not talking about remove the, the, your thoughts of them. You need to listen very closely. You need to remove every single item, piece of clothing, any gifts, a picture, pictures, photos, videos. Remove every single thing that exists that reminds you of them. Everything. Remove everything. Your emotions are tied to the experiences that you've had with that individual, with that man. If you do not remove the things that are around you or that you can stumble across that remind you of him, you will easily fall into the trap of, you know, just going about your day and all of a sudden you accidentally, maybe you're cleaning up your room and you accidentally stumble across the sweater that he gave you that was his that still smells like him and smells like his cologne. And your addicted butt takes the sweater and starts smelling the sweater and you're like, oh my God, it smells just like him. <laughs> And you're sitting and you're laying on your bed and you're like cuddling the sweater. You're like, <laughs> I miss him so much. <laughs> I love this sweater so much. <laughs> I love him so much. And you're just, just, just a wreck. You're just, you're just spiraling down a rabbit hole, which you can't bring yourself down. And what do you think is the first thing that happens once you, once you got the sweater like this, I miss it so much. I just remember how we used to cuddle and he used to smell just like this. And then you look at your phone. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, I know his number by heart. I know I, I know I deleted it and I, and I know I, I shouldn't text him, but I know his number by heart. And maybe, maybe if he gets, maybe if he gets my call, he'll realize how much he misses me too. <laughs> maybe I should just call him. Okay, I'll call him. I'll call him. I'll call him. It's fine. It's fine. I'll call him. I'll call him. Hello? I miss you so much. Can you come back to me, please? If you do not do the job of removing everything in your life that reminds you of them, of him specifically, you will easily find yourself spiraling down a rabbit hole that you can't pull yourself out of. Okay. And remember what I talked about flow? It'll be a lot harder when these emotions are not like a river and they're like literally a waterfall. It'll be a lot harder to control them as well. And you're going to fall susceptible to your emotions because they're going to feel impossible to deal with when they hit you that strong and unexpected because you're allowing things to just lay around or be around without getting rid of them and allowing yourself to accidentally stumble upon them. It's the same thing with pictures. For some of you, and I trust me, I've been there as well. For some of you, this whole thing, if you're trying, listen to me, I'm going to get mad now. This is the part where I get mad. If you're trying to emotionally detach yourself from that man, you need to delete every single picture. Look in my eyes. Every single picture and video that exists on your phone and computer every single one every single one i know that it's painful and i know that you don't want to delete those things but i promise you once they're deleted they're gone so no matter how painful it was they can't come back so what's going to happen is after you delete them, and I talk about really deleting them, don't forget the recently deleted album. Delete them out of there. Delete them out of the hidden album. Delete them out of your Google Photos. Delete them, delete it out of your iCloud. Delete it out of your laptop. Delete it out of your uh, old phone. Delete it off of your iPad. Delete it off of your computer. Okay, delete it from... Delete the Snapchat memories. Delete the Snapchat. Delete the Snapchat memories. Go into your hidden folder in your Snapchat memories. Delete those two. Okay? Delete it from... Delete your emails. If you emailed each other picture, delete them. Throw away the picture albums. Throw away the collages. Delete it all. Don't archive your pictures with them on Instagram so you can look back at them. Delete it.
Delete it. Delete and remove everything. Everything. Remember how I just told you you stumble across the sweater? You're scrolling on Snapchat. And what is it? What's the first thing going to say? Oh, one year ago today, you and it's like a video of you kissing the guy. What's that going to do for you? It's going to send you down, spiraling down a rabbit hole once again. And don't be stupid. You're not stupid. You know that if you're leaving it on somewhere, you know that they exist in many different places. So what I mean by that is don't just delete pictures on your phone and be like, oh, I, I won't bother about Snapchat. I don't check Snapchat anyways. And then three months from now, you're seeing, oh, one year ago today on your Snapchat memories and now you're crying again. Okay, do yourself a favor. And if you're trying to emotionally detach from this man, delete it from everywhere at once. It'll be painful deleting them because you'll be like, oh my God, I'm never gonna have these memories again. After they're deleted, it'll be done. And you won't even have to debate yourself on whether or not to check those things, whether or not to look at those things, whether or not to wear his sweater. You won't have to debate yourself with anything. You'll, they'll be gone. So you won't have a choice, which is good. If you're trying to emotionally detach from a person, you need to help yourself by not giving yourself a choice sometimes. For some of you addicts, okay, that cannot help yourself, and I'm not saying that because I'm better than you, trust me, we've all been there. For some of you addicts that cannot help yourself but be on the phone, and when you, when you know that you shouldn't be with that man, instead of talking to him, now you're on the phone, and every second, now you're checking his you're checking his WhatsApp story. Oh, did he post something on his WhatsApp story? Well, what did he post? You're checking his Instagram story. Did he post something on his Instagram story? What did he post? He's out at dinner. Let me see if there's two forks or one. How many for how many plates? Uh, he usually doesn't order that. That side's probably for another girl. And you're going insane get if if you know that you're like that you need to block him because the same way i talk to you guys about the sweater and how it will send you down a rabbit hole is the same thing with the um with the addiction to checking and seeing what he's up to now because for some of you not blocking him is only going to make it easier for for you to feed that monster it's a monster it's a monster that wants to check and see everything he's doing and oh, 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 oh but I haven't checked his story all day. Maybe I'll just check it once and see see what he's see what he's doing, right? Every time you feed that monster, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. Until that monster is so big that you can no longer control it. And then what happens again? Your emotions aren't like a river anymore. They're like a waterfall. They're like Niagara Falls and they're totally out of your control. And so what does that do to you? It forces you to feel like the only way to get rid of all of this pain and agony is by taking action and reaching out to him and you've ruined everything you've been working for. Get rid of the clothes. Like I said, don't leave any clothing items laying around. No sweaters, no shirts. If he's not, if he hasn't taken them back and you know you have no way of returning them to him or you just don't wanna bother trying to handle a way to, don't use returning them to him as an excuse to see him. You're better off just throwing them in the trash. I mean, actually throwing them in the trash, not putting them in a trash bag that you can find again. I mean, actually throwing them in the trash can, in a public trash can that you don't have access to and you know that it's gone forever. Okay, don't put it in storage. Okay, don't put it in your basement. Don't put it in your closet in a trash bag. Actually throw it away. Okay. Get rid of it that you're not tempted to pull it out for any reason and get rid of it so that you don't accidentally stumble acro across it for any reason. Shirts, sweater, pants, underwear. I don't care. You're weird if you keep his underwear, but underwear, socks, towels, brushes. If he if he slept over at your place a bunch and he left his toothbrush, he left his uh, armpit scrubber, he left his face. Throw it away. Th throw it away. I don't care if he left a travel toothpaste, throw it away. He got his favorite snacks in your, in your kitchen because he comes over. He likes to eat. get rid of those snacks, get rid of anything, his favorite, because that will remind you of him because it's his favorite. Any songs that you guys, you know, had a lot of fun to that's like your song, delete it from your phone. Don't listen to it ever again. Get rid of it. When I say remove, I literally mean remove everything. Are you trying to emotionally detach from him or not? Your, your mind's going to play a trick on you 
when you're trying to emotionally detach yourself from someone that you've been really invested in, you're going to hold things as excuses to see that person or come across that person again. So I'll give you an example, right? So let's say you say you want to get rid of the clothes and you're like, oh, I've got to get rid of these clothes. I don't want I don't want to have these clothes anymore. And you're like, oh, but, you know, I don't really want to uh, I don't have time to go return these clothes to him. I'll hold on to these clothes until I can return them to him. It's doing two things that are really bad. First of all, it's giving you hope that you will see that person again. You have the clothes in your possession, which means you can stumble across them. But you're also in your mind, you're not allowing that person or you're not allowing yourself to feel like, okay, the relationship is done. I don't have to worry about the next time I'm going to see them. I don't even really have to think about them if I don't want to because I'm not going to see them again. As the clothes sit in your closet and as you continuously say to yourself, oh, but I have to return the clothes to him at some point. It, your mind plays this trick on you where you it becomes an ongoing relationship still. And you continue to be attached to the person because you feel like, oh, well, I'm still have to see you to deliver your clothes to you. And so in that time in between, you just continuously think about them as if you're still ongoing, invested in them the same amount that you were the entire time. And so it defeats the whole purpose of emotionally detaching yourself. Number four, we have explore. I want you to begin, right? You're trying to emotionally detach yourself from someone. Um, you're trying to get over this relationship or situationship that hasn't been working out for you. I want you to begin exploring things that you enjoy and things that you're passionate about. If you don't know what your passions are, just start doing some things that you like doing. Not that you like doing with boys and not that you like doing around boys. I want you to explore hobbies of yours or pa possible passions of yours, things that you enjoy. Why? Why do I want you to explore the things that you enjoy? Because in the process of emotionally detaching yourself from him, you're going to have a transition period where a lot of your time, remember I talked about the very beginning, your time and energy has also been invested into that guy as you've been emotionally invested in that person. Now, when you emotionally detach yourself from that guy, what's going to happen is there's going to be a excess of time and energy that is now existing that was once being invested in that person. This is why <clears throat> it's so dangerous to it's so sorry, I sh it's so dangerous, but it's also so important to identify if you're staying in a relationship because that's actually the relationship that you want to be in. Or if you're in a relationship because you're addicted to the fact that you have nothing going on in yourself and nothing else to focus your time and energy on. And now that they're doing all this stuff, they're cheating, they're talking to this girl, talking to that girl. You get to be Sherlock Holmes where you're sitting around every single day and you're on the phone trying to figure out oh, what's what's this clue? How does how does this clue connect? Scooby-Doo we're the Scooby-Doo crew and you're sitting around with your girlfriends and you guys are like okay so he liked this girl's picture on exactly April 22nd and I see that in the background there's a wine glass with red lipstick on that look at Jamie's story on Jamie's story it's the same wine glass with red lipstick that looks like the same setting okay so if we go back to this day it makes a lot of oh we caught him we caught him. That's the girl. We caught her. Right. And you get so addicted to being Sherlock Holmes and going on Scooby-Doo chases with your girlfriends and the amount of energy and time you spend invested in that guy and figuring out all these clues and connecting all these dots. Right. So you become not just emotionally invested in the person in him, but you also become emotionally invested in the amount of energy you had to expend being in that relationship. And so it's very important that you explore as this next step because there, that transition period of spending so much of your energy and focus on one particular person, you're, when you detach yourself from that relationship and that person, you're going to feel the excess of energy and time that no longer is going into that person and now has to be channeled somewhere. Because what happens is... If you do not actually have a plan for channeling that energy into something else, you're going to do one of two things. 
either you're going to go back to that person because you're going to be like, I'm so bored. I don't got nothing to do. There's nothing fun going on. There's nothing exciting. And that boredom is going to make you feel like it's, it's emotions are very weird. Sometimes we get our, we get our wires crossed with different emotions that boredom you feel from not being so emotionally invested in a person right? And having to figure out all these Scooby-Doo clues is actually going to confuse you with the idea that you miss that person and that guy. You're going to feel like because you're so bored now that you don't have to chase after any more Scooby-Doo clues that you actually miss him. But you don't actually miss him. You're actually just bored that you don't have to put your energy into him and chase him around and figure out all these clues anymore. And so it's very important that as you take your energy away from him that you have a plan to put your energy into something else because the second thing that happens is that if you're not putting your energy into him you take it back and now you have excess energy now you say well i don't want to put my energy into him so what's the first thing you're going to do you're going to put your energy into another guy That's never going to work out for you. You're just transferring all your feelings that you had for this guy into another guy. And what happens is you're putting your feelings on pause instead of you actually healing and working through the situation and detaching yourself from that last man. You just projected your feelings onto this new guy. And what happens is after that relationship ends with the new guy, your feelings go back on play for the old guy because you never grieved them. You never got over them. You never worked through them. Go out to places that you like going simply because you like going to those places. Don't go to those places looking for boys. Stay off of dating apps. Don't be going to the club or the bar. That's not where you need to be going. You're going there for boys. You're not going there for fun. Go to places that you actually enjoy, whether it be um, a museum. I don't know. Maybe you're a historian. Go some. Go somewhere. Go out, go out to eat with your girlfriends, go to a fancy dinner, go to a fashion show, go do, go to an event, go to a basketball game, go to somewhere that you enjoy, explore, explore your life that you can begin putting your time and energy into invested into something else because that will allow it to be much easier to emotionally detach yourself from the person. Okay, if you sit around, don't make me get mad. If you sit around and you just lay on your bed like a starfish, okay, and you sit around being bored and say to yourself, "Ah, I'm so bored. Ah, I wish I could do something with someone. And the first thing that's going to come on your mind is going to be that man and how much more interesting your life would be if you were just hanging out with that guy. And once again, your emotions will go from being a river or a stream that you can control and you can allow to pass through you and they'll be more like Niagara Falls falls and become uncontrollable. Okay, so you need to be exploring all the different things you can be doing and all the different places you can be going and all the different functions you can attend that you find interesting, not that boys find interesting or that you can go to meet boys that you find interesting that, and you can go there and you can do those things and enjoy those things. And I've said this before to you guys plenty of times. So you guys should know this by now. If you're not sure what you enjoy or where to go or where to spend time, head over to TikTok. You go in the search bar on TikTok, type in things to do in my city, whatever city it is that you live in. If you live in the suburbs or in the outskirts of a city, just type in whatever city is the major city is the closest to you. So things to do in Miami, things to do in L.A., things to do in New York, things to do in Lagos, Nigeria, things to do in South Africa, things to do in Manchester, wherever you live, just type in things to do there and on TikTok, it will it will show you a whole bunch of content creators that will tell you all the different things that are amazing to do in your city. You might be thinking, I already I already know everything that goes on in my city. I'm an expert. I've been everywhere. I've been to every restaurant. I've been to everything. Trust me. OK, you're not an oracle. There are more things to do in your city than you actually realize. And the amazing part about it is not everything is going out to eat. OK. There's so much fun, interesting stuff that you can do in a major city that doesn't isn't just going out to a bar, a club or going out to a restaurant. Okay, you'll be shocked when you actually search it up and you realize how many interesting things are out there for you to go do. That isn't just going to a club bar or restaurant. It's crazy. And like I say, I'm telling you this because I've actually done it and used it. 
okay? I live in Toronto. There are so many interesting, awesome things to do in my city. There's a place in my city where you can go and you can make a custom rug on the spot. So you can like go with your friends and you can make a custom rug on the spot, create the design from scratch, put it on the rug, like knit it out in the machine and stuff like that and have it on the rug custom for you at the same in the same day. And you can actually come out of, you know, the time spent with like this custom cool rug. Okay. Something I never would have imagined is even a thing you could do. And where did I find it? By searching on TikTok things to do in my city. And I was like, damn, that's so cool. I didn't even know that I would. This is the thing. Some of you guys like, I don't know what I like. I don't know what I like. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I like to spend my time. In. I don't know what my hobbies are. That's the thing about it is when you don't even know what's out there available to you. You don't even know that there are things out there existing that you would enjoy. And the same thing in the example I just gave you guys. I didn't know that I would enjoy going and creating a custom rug from scratch and designing it myself because I didn't even know that it existed. But when I did the work of trying to figure out other things that are existing that I could possibly enjoy, that's how I came across the thing and realized that I enjoyed it. And number five, we ignore listen very closely you are emotionally detaching yourself from this man anticipate the fact that it's not going to be that easy not just because it's hard to emotionally detach yourself from the person but men also enjoy having their grip on you i'm telling you this as a man which means if he gets the sense that you are actually getting over him and getting over the relationship he will make attempts to gain back control over you. There's nothing more that upsets a man than realizing he's actually lost a girl. Not just she, you guys break up and you know the relationship's over. Like he's actually lost you to the point where even if he reaches out to you or calls you or, or texts you or shows up at your place, you're not going to be moved by it. That realization that he's actually lost you is very, very painful. And it's an ego. Um, it's very, very, it, it hurts the ego and damages the ego a lot. So why do I bring that up? Because in the process of you actually doing all the other steps and emotionally detaching yourself from this man, from this person, what's going to happen is he's going to say, whoa, 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 whoa. You're actually not talking to me. You're actually not texting me. You're actually not calling me. Whoa, whoa. That wasn't part of the plan. You're supposed to still be invested in me that I can still use you and I can get you to come back to me anytime I want to, right? By feeding you more crumbs. And he'll begin to start reaching out back to you, love bombing you, right? Saying all the things that he knows are your trigger points to get you emotional again. It's all like, it's, it's it's all a game. It's all a game of the mind, right? Because those men understand if I can get you emotional again, your emotions will become like, not like a river, not like a stream that you can control. They'll be like Niagara Falls. So if I can hit all your trigger points, and that's the part about exes or past partners that is so difficult to deal with, because in the process of them growing with you and learning you and understanding you, they will begin to understand all your emotional trigger points. And so what's the first thing he does when he comes back and he's trying to reel you back in? He hits all of your individual unique trigger points, all the things that will get you so emotional about him and the relationship and get you to go back to him, respond to him, be back invested in him again. OK, remember when I just talked to you guys about removing everything that reminds you of them, the pictures, the videos, the, the clothing items, all that good stuff. Don't let anything exist that requires you to go back and see him one last time, speak to him one last time call him one last time what's going to happen is and this is why i say ignore but it's ignore slash anticipate okay you need to be anticipating the fact that he knows that an easy way to reel you back in is to say oh but i just wanted to give you your clothes back oh but i just wanted to i have this thing of yours and i just wanted it to return it to you oh but i have this item of yours i just wanted to give it back to you oh but i had this collage that we made of each other and i just wanted to give it back to you and he knows 
that an easy way to reel you back in emotionally is by making it seem like, oh, but there's this thing that we got to do still. And when we do this thing, it's just got to be this one last time that we do this thing before we finally stop seeing each other. If you're not anticipating that, if you're not aware of that as a, as pos not even just a possibility, as something that's going to happen when you actually try and become successful at emotionally detaching yourself from the man, if you're not anticipating that, it's going to be very difficult to deal with if you're not prepared for that. Because the rush of emotions that's going to hit you when he starts hitting all your trigger points and tell and talking to you all the things that you want to hear and saying all the things that you want to hear, it's going to be very difficult to deal with when you're not properly prepared and anticipating that happening. But in the process of you ignoring, you don't just ignore without the anticipation that he's going to try to break you. He's going to try to break you and get back into your life to gain back his control over you. Because once you emotionally detach yourself from the man, you're he's no longer going to have the control over you. He still wants to have control of you. Trust me, any man who's been with the woman still wants to be able to have control over her, them, over her, even if he's not with her anymore. I'm saying this as a man. So your process of actually getting through the situation is removing your emotional attachment to you that you can remove his control over you. If you are not prepared and anticipating his move to try to gain back control over you, then you'll be flustered when it does happen. That includes not just the returning of items, but it also includes him love bombing you, sending you a bunch. I, I miss you so much. I regret everything that happened. And this time it'll be different. And I'm not going to treat you anything the same as what I treated you last time. And blah, 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 all the apologies in the book right? All the love bombing in the book, the big grand gestures to try to win you back over all of that. If you've already made the decision that this relationship is over and it's not going to work out. And then he tries a big grand gesture when he sees he's lost control over you. That is not genuine, right? That's not because he wants to make the relationship work. That's because he realizes he's lost control over you. And that is an attempt to gain back control over you and gain control over your emotions.